Hi there, folks. Um, as sometimes happens when we film these things, we, uh, we watch the video afterwards and we realize we missed a very important part. So I thought I would actually go into a little bit about the construction because we do things at Arctic a little bit differently when it comes to jets. Um, so I wanted to show you some differences. Uh, the first thing, obviously, with anything that you build is the raw materials that you use. You can see on this particular um, jet, this is a standard offering. I think this is a custom molded plastics. So there's waterways. And then we have our own uh, private uh, label one that we've had made by Rising Dragon. Uh, and I was in the engineering team that helped make this jet. Um, this material here is uh, POM. Uh, most likely it's POM. It could be some, some companies use nylon, uh, some companies use uh, ABS. Um, the fact is, is that this material here over time uh, with the water chemistry can get affected and, and oxidize. Um, why is that a big deal? Well, like all plastics and stuff, when they're in, you know, water is the universal solvent, plus we're using uh, uh, chemicals in the water, uh, especially the pH decreasers, and if you're on a chemical system, you're using sanitizers, they're quite corrosive, um, um, which means basically they oxidize. So they'll, in addition to potentially oxidizing the metal, they also oxidize the plastic. And this particular jet, when it goes into the body of, we call the piece that's in the spot that this uh, fits into, the jet body, when this screws in there, actually it doesn't screw in, it pops in. And there's these little tabs that hold it in place. And you can see these little tabs here, right? And they're plastic and they have a little bit of flex to them so that when they go in place, they clip in and holds the jet in place. But over time, with the water chemistry, this becomes more and more rigid. It loses that flexibility and these tabs end up breaking and then your jets fly out and they sit into the bottom of the spa. So the way we fix that at Arctic is we, uh, first we used uh, polycarbonate. Polycarbonate is an extremely strong plastic, very flexible, um, quite strong, and considerably more expensive, about 50% more expensive than the materials that are typically used uh, for jet barrels. Um, and then there was a product, a chemical product, used in the United States called Baquaspa. And Baquaspa is a biguanide. Unfortunately, Baquaspa breaks down polycarbonate, which we didn't know. It's a very small percentage of spas that actually are using this, and in Canada you can't use this, but in the rest of the world that can use uh, these biguanides, um, a biguanide uh, sanitizer is like Lysol, if you think of a brand name. That they're part of a chemical family called Quince. Anyway, um, that material happened to break down polycarbonate. So then what we did is we looked at uh, what we call plastic alloys, and there is a very, very chemically resistant uh, form of polycarbonate that also has PET in it um, called Xylex. And Xylex is four times more expensive than polycarbonate. But it's the most chemically resistant plastic that you can use. Uh, so it's extremely, extremely good product. So this back material here is made out of that. So we never have to worry about this degrading due to the water chemistry, which all other jets have this issue, right? Um, so it's very, very long term. We're actually one of the only manufacturer that actually warranties the jet barrel. Uh, most of their manufacturers do not cover this. In fact, they want this to break, so you have to come in and buy another jet down the road. And these are not cheap. Um, the other big thing is, as you notice, this doesn't have any tabs. This is, has, has a, a threaded, uh, feature so it actually screws into the jet barrel and then it hits this little bump here and it pops in and we still have the valve capability which this also has you can turn your jet on and off by twisting the the head of the jet or the face of the jet as a, like the knob of a tap right you're able to turn it on and off to control the flow basically what happens is you see this hole is here it would line up and when you turn it in now that's off right when you turn it the other way water from the jet line can come in and go into the, the jet. So th that's what this uh, valve function works. And it was actually quite tricky to figure out how to do that with a thread. Um, it was uh, being able to put this tab, this simple little tab here is what allowed us to do it. And we rem one of the things that we wanted to do is we were solving the problem of these jets um, and we wanted this to be backward compatible so that this could be used uh, in spas that we'd already sold. And so there's a little ring inside the uh, body of each jet and that's what the, the clips, the tabs fit into this uh, uh, little 
restriction, I guess. So they, we have this insert inside the body and then the, the clip clips in behind it. So what we did was we made it so that that little piece that fits in there was actually a threaded piece. So we could actually take that piece out, put it into any of the jet barrels that we'd sold in the past and now convert it so that they could uh, use the new jets. Um, we did this, I think this is almost over a decade now that we've had this patent. Um, and in fact, um, several of the companies, well, at least one of the companies, Waterways, which is the largest in the industry, they actually licensed that from Rising Dragon, that patent, uh, to use it. And what's interesting is that even though they can offer this under license, they don't because they have to pay more for the license and it costs a lot more to manufacture a jet in this fashion. Now that was one of the patents. The other patent is, is especially it's pertaining to spinning jets. So you'll see this spinning jet spins like this and you can see it's got some movement to it. And it's because if you look, there's this white ring in here and in this white ring, along this white ring, there's bearings, ball bearings, stainless steel ball bearings in here. Again, stainless steel, uh, inside of a water chemistry that's changing. You don't want anything that's steel. The other thing is, is this, this ring of stuff often gets debris in it. So you'll get like a pine needle or something stuck in there and it prevents the barrel from spinning. And it actually has a lot more contacts uh, inside here because it's spinning along the inside of this uh, back piece here. The bearing is on the inside of that and it's spinning around in there, but there's a lot of friction. And with heat and expansion and contraction, as you can see, it's two different types of plastic. So they expand and contract at different rates. Um, and so what ends up happening is this becomes harder and harder to spin. And eventually, like this pr particular jet has four openings here, um, but a lot of them only have one. And what'll happen is, is that this thing will stop spinning when the jet's pointed there and you just get the jet that's kind of off in the wrong spot. Now you can plug that to create some back pressure and help clean that uh, bearing spot out. You plug it and I kind of used to wind my finger with some back pressure and it cleaned those bearings out a little. Um, but it does get stuck and a, a lot of times uh, it gets stuck or sometimes this material breaks down and you end up seeing little ball bearings in the bottom of your, uh, in the footwell of your spa and of course then the jet needs to be replaced. It will no longer spin. Which is probably the main reason why you'll see most spa manufacturers only offer a few spinning jets because they're more likely to fail um, because they have more moving parts, they have more things that can go wrong with them. So like most of the research and development that we do at Arctic Spas, um, we look at what are the problems and how can we solve them. So we spent a long time and what we did was we actually created the entire jet, spinning jet, as a bearing. Right, so this uh, titanium rod that's in here, so it's a stainless steel pin that's titanium coated. And then in the front of the, the, uh, the face of the jet, inside there, you can't really see it because it's snapped on, but there's a little bushing. So there's a stainless steel titanium coated bushing that the pin sticks into. And so and the pin is rounded off and it actually just goes inside and it actually polishes polishes the end so that if any debris gets into that bushing or if any buildup or calcium stuff builds up on there, it's constantly polishing the inside of there. As well, there's only one point of contact. So this, this thing is designed so that there's very little friction. And you can see when I spin this, it spins very freely, right? This rotates very, very easily. So it takes less energy to cause our jet to spin. Why is that important? Well, the more energy that it takes to spin the jet, the less force you're gonna get uh, when the jet does the massage on you. So we want as much of the water pressure um, and as much of the impact to be on you. We don't want it used to try and make this thing, thing uh, spin, right? You can see that the barrel shape is exactly the same and it's because we used to do them we used to do it exactly the same way. We used to have that exact same bearing cluster here, right? Now we don't have that cluster. We've replaced that with a pin. And that was another patent. And that's probably the main reason why we can uh, put spinning jets on every jet in an Arctic spa because it has, it has this great ability. Now, in fact, the only drawback to this type of a design is over time, 
uh, you know, with this pin constantly polishing inside the stainless steel, what happens is this pin can get shorter, right? And so we actually make the pin stick into this end here. We make it longer than it needs to be. And then what we did is we used time elapsed um, testing so that we could estimate how many times this thing could spin before the pin would wear down. And what we did is we used high speed uh, to spin this at very high speed and we uh, timed it so that it would last um, for about 15 years at high speed. So most of the time this thing spins at low speed or it's not on at all. Um, so our idea was that this jet would last the life of the spa or very close to it. Um, of course, you can still replace these, um, but I thought it was important to show the two distinctions. So the distinction is better raw materials to start with, no tabs, screw in instead, and instead of using ball bearings in here, we created a system where the entire thing is a bearing uh, using, using this pin instead of pin and bushing system so you get less friction, better uh, resistance to failure, um, self-cleaning, uh, just a much better design. And that's the patented design used on all of the spinning jets on Arctic Spas.